there is a, the truth is there's no way to avoid it because you don't know when you're talking to a seller who, he, who else he's talking to, right? If he's talking to jerk one, jerk two, jerk three, there's nothing you can do about it if jerk, jerks want to get upset when they don't get a deal that they were counting on. It, again, it's happened to me plenty of times. I mean, I've been doing this 10 years. I, it, it happens all the time. I don't get upset by it. It's part of, it's part of uh, the business. So we've discussed things before about um, how one of the best things about New York is that a seller really can't change his mind. Once they sign a contract, they're pretty much locked up. And what I've what I've said before is that if a seller decides to change their mind, when you want to buy and you go through the legal process of telling them that you want to buy, I do not want to talk to this guy right now. Then um, you can do two things, right? You can you can sue the seller for specific performance, and you can file a list pendants on the property. Now, if you anything short of that, really, you cannot file a list pendants on the property. So. There are scumbag people in this industry who will file this pendants on a property where they really have, even after it was sold to somebody else. I don't want to get into too much details with that one, but there are a bunch of things that other uh, investors can do that are really, really low down and dirty, right? I've had guys, I had a guy that got pissed off, wasn't even an investor, it was a retail buyer, but people in the industry. I had guys that, that went into a contract with me to buy. Now, you got to understand, and I say this all the time, and people don't understand it. The, the standard retail contract between a, buyer, between a seller and a buyer has a mortgage contingency in it where the buyer can get out of the contract pretty much with one text or email anytime they want. Now, people say, what does that mean? That's not true. It's, uh, I was in the mortgage business for 17 years. Okay, Don't tell me how it works. This is how it works. I took many calls from people that said, you know what, I changed my mind. Can you just deny me for a mortgage? It took me 15 seconds to deny somebody for a mortgage. It's very easy to deny someone. Documents expire all the time. It's very simple. So a standard retail contract, a standard contract, has a mortgage contingency in it, which means the buyer can pretty much walk away whenever he wants. Well, it's one of the reasons why I buy properties from people at a discount, because I don't have contingencies on my contract and... That I provide them that certainty. They know they're going to get. They're going to get that. They're going to get the price that we agree on. Um. So what jerks will do? There are other jerks in this business. I mean, I, I titled this assholes. I guess we can talk about assholes. Is they'll they'll come in very high on a property. So you have it. You have it listed for sale for five hundred. They'll come in like five seventy five. Very high. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. I'll take it. And then what happens is they do an inspection and they go, oh, I need a forty thousand uh, dollar adjustment and i'm like i just rehab this property there's forty thousand dollars worth of work to do sorry look at the inspection report there's all kinds of hazardous bullshit now you've got to understand when an inspector does a report he's not looking for good right he's looking for bad and you can always find bad things always always you can find issues so my my point is that jerks will go into contract with under the advice of either a asshole attorney or asshole realtor and they'll say listen we got to get this property let's come in high but don't worry i'll knock them down on the inspection or on the appraisal that's happened too the appraisal came in you know appraisal comes in for value but speaks about an issue and the guy goes i, I, I don't like it now you've got to understand it a buyer has a seller by the balls till the contract is signed, even after the contract signed right a buyer you know, can walk away because the because the, the the financing doesn't happen. I just had that happen with somebody, another jerk, it was a realtor. I decided to be nice and give her the contract because even though I had a higher offer, because she moved very quickly and her attorney moved very quickly, and then a week later she goes, "I can't get financing," and then she puts in another offer at a significantly lower number, and I'm like, "This is bullshit." So people will do that. They'll put in offers with no intention of actually closing at that price. That is bad. That happens. It happens a lot. So you have to be weary of bad buyers. And you have to be weary of bad realtors. There's a lot of those. You got to be weary of bad attorneys. There's some bad ones. Really bad ones. One I'm looking at a pick, at a, his name right now. I'm not going to talk about it. Because he's also part of the lawsuit. So all of those people can contribute to a bad transaction. Um Either a buy or a sell or an assignment, it doesn't matter. So I want you to understand that there's a million things people can do to try and screw you out of the deal. 
the way to be sort of protected is to work with somebody like me who's who's seen it all and um you know we can jv and if something like this comes up we can deal with it together so I, this deal that i'm suing whatever I'm, I'm holding some people's hands on it too all right i'm not panicking but uh i mean because i'm gonna win for sure it's just uh, it's gonna take a little time so um that's i mean i can I, I guess i can go through other things that other real estate investors do to to screw you over but uh you know one one of the things is you know they'll come they'll come in at a higher number on an offer and then and then tell the guy at the last second i have to go lower and sometimes the guy just feels like he has to go with him that happened to me recently um i went to the guy i'm like why are you selling it to the same you told me you were going to this guy for a higher price but you ended up selling it to, me, to him for the same price what happened and he's like, oh yeah, at the last second he changed it. I'm like, I don't know why this guy didn't call me. But the things like that, people are unscrupulous and people are, uh, you know, people have little moral fiber or limited moral fiber, unfortunately. There are people in the business like that. I guess there's people like that in every business. That's the truth. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com or learn to flip and wholesale.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help all the algorithms. A lot more people see my videos. A lot more people want subscribing. It's been great. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Um, and please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I, very often I have no idea what to talk about. Um, so your questions give me food for thought, give me topics to discuss, and allow me to help you, which is really the whole point of this channel is to help you as much as I can. So please keep the comments coming. They do not have to be about the, the video you're watching. I don't care. They can be about anything. If it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something that I've covered recently, I'll send you a link to a video or videos on it. I just sent out a bunch of links to people. And if it's something that I haven't covered in a long time or something that I've never covered before, I will be happy to do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.